So I'm here today because I manifested it. You see, I told myself I wanted to do more talks, more sharing, and more inspiring. I wrote it down, I put it out to the universe, and I prayed about it. Literally a couple days later, I got a call. Hey, do you want to do TEDx? This year's theme is momentum. Of course I did. You see, I thought about it for quite a while. What does momentum mean? You know, I read and I researched, and for me, momentum is the force in movement in your life's journey. And so, do I just speak about my life to you with you guys, or do I speak about my experiences, or do I just speak about myself? See, when I first introduced myself, I introduced myself as a director. I've been in this industry for about 10 years now, actually more than 10 years now. Um, I love making films as much as I love to watch them. I love to immerse myself in a new reality. I like to meet new people. I like to learn new things and feel new things, all without leaving my couch. You see, but making films is really hard. You have to volunteer for so long to get your foot in the industry. You really have to hustle. You're probably broke. Uh, you really have to sacrifice a lot, time, money, social life. You work for very long days, upward of 14 hours. I've worked a 22-hour day before, and then had to go back to work the next day. Uh, you work in crazy weather, from the hot sun to the snow, sleet, rain, just to get that perfect, perfect shot. I remember once I was standing in a field, the snow was up to my knees, it was the middle of a snowstorm, it was minus 27 degrees, and my face hurt. You know when your face hurts? Because it's so cold, but I was so happy what I was doing. I also introduced myself as a people person. A people person because I speak a lot about my life and my experiences. I'm a great listener. I like to empathize. I like to look beyond the veil. You know, I, I'm the person sitting next to a stranger letting them pour out all of their issues because I really want to hear what they're saying. I also speak on being black, on being a female, on being a filmmaker, and on being an immigrant, and on being a unicorn because I'm a black, female, immigrant filmmaker in an industry that's not black, nor is it female. I'm not the status quo. I speak a lot about activism, standing up, even if that means standing alone. One thing that I'm asked quite often is, but how do I make change, Mr. Student, or, you know, I just work part-time at a restaurant. And I always say, make ripples where you are, make constant movement, momentum. See, in 2017, I wrote a film and directed a film called Haven. Haven premiered at South by Southwest and then later at Cannes. But before Haven, I just felt like I wasn't doing enough. And so, you know, I was making these films for entertainment and for money, and it was good content, but was it meaningful? And so for me, I felt like I just needed to shift. For a lot of us, when it comes to making change, we say, when I have more time or when I have more money. And my shift came when it felt like every day video surfaced online of unarmed black men being killed by the police. Or maybe even years later, when it felt like all too often we're hearing about women being sexually assaulted by men in very high places. And as a black female, how was I making change? And see, I've done my fair share of protests. I did the Instagram post, Facebook post, I retweeted, I got t-shirts, I had pins, but was any of that life-changing? And so I thought about it. I had what Oprah calls an aha moment, I'm a storyteller, and I would make ripples where I was. Haven is my ripple. In under four minutes, I was able to share a story that promotes love, hope, and strength. You see, the same person that walks into Sea Haven isn't the same person that leaves. I make films that fight social injustices. I make films that give you strength, hope, and love. I challenge ideologies, and I change stereotypes. I was able to rip the Band-Aid off of the taboo of children's sexual assault. See, let this film sit with you. Let it resonate. Let it create a story that you want to go home and tell your friends and family, and maybe even strangers. You know, let's talk about sexual safety. Let's talk about uh, self-preservation. Let's talk about self-care. We can talk about consent and how yes is the only acceptable form of consent. We can have a conversation about generational trauma and toxicity. And we should stop saying that boys will be boys because then boys will be rapists. 
See, I was able to have all of these conversations with hundreds and thousands of people worldwide in under four minutes. You see, this, was my, I, this is how I was able to take a knee. This was my boycott, this was my march, this was my rant. See, I'm a conduit, I'm a way for the message to spread. I get to you before you're able to put up your barriers. I'm mind cleansing, clearing you of all the things that society has taught you to harden your soul. I'm teaching you how to see again. Who in here wants to make change? Put your hands up. And keep your hands up if you're already making change. And put your hands up if you're ready to make change right now. Perfect. This is the perfect start. This is the perfect start to your ripples. See, Haven isn't my story, but it is my responsibility. Making Haven was hard. I had a script. I didn't have any money, because before I told you, remember, you, you're broke when you're a filmmaker. Yeah. And I had a script, and I had a team. So I had a script, and then I had a team who believed in me and what I believed in. See, so what would prove to be harder was finding a little actress. I mean, how could I find an actress to say things that I'd never want a little girl to say? How could I introduce her to such topics for something that could probably ruin her innocence? She would have to be young enough to play the role, but yet mature enough to handle the topic. I met Davina. At only eight years old, this is her first production, and she is the maturity of most of us in this room. See, when I first met Davina, I spoke to her about everything from menstruation to childbirth. I spoke to her about creating boundaries for yourself, respecting yourself, and teaching others to respect you. I taught her about consent. I taught her that consent isn't just sexual. Consent is you asking if you can touch my hair. No, you can't touch my hair. We made sure that we were very intentional when it came to Davina. We made sure that we created a family environment. I told her how I was her new best friend and that if she ever needed me, that she could call me. See, Davina had no idea the ripples that she was making when she showed up for set that morning. A lot of us are very unaware of the changes that we make every single day in this world. Who in here knows of or has heard of Oprah Winfrey? And who has heard of Hattie McDaniel? Okay, not that many people. So June 10th, 1893, Hattie McDaniel was born in Wichita, Kansas to two former slaves. Several years later, she went to an all-white school where she was brutally bullied because of the color of her skin. She needed a distraction, so she decided to put on shows for the students where she would sing, act, and dance. The bullying stopped. She used all of these skills, honed them, and became an actress. In 1940, Hattie McDaniel was the first black female to ever be awarded an Oscar for Best Supporting Female Actress. And see, something that started as a survival mechanism made ripples and paved the way for people like Whoopi Goldberg, Queen Latifah, Viola Davis, Halle Berry, and Oprah Winfrey. And I've watched film by all of these amazing actors, and I'm always inspired. But now it's your turn. Your turn to make ripples. See, what's a cause that's near and dear to your heart? What's something that's very important to you? Is it poverty? Maybe it's immigration? Maybe it's youth services? Or maybe it's inclusion and diversity? You see, change doesn't always look like volunteering and protesting. Sometimes it's just showing up for class especially if you're the only female person of color. Graduate and excel in your industry. Sometimes it's just learning the rules and suggesting little changes, or climbing the corporate ladder and changing the direction. See, we have to break free of fear, and we have to build a world that we want to participate in. Don't wait for the right time, because now is perfect. Just make ripples where you are. Thank you.